Hey everyone, welcome to another uh, review. This is a quick movie reviews. Every like few months I do these is because, you know, sometimes I just don't have time to do individual reviews for some of these movies. And also sometimes I just don't want to because sometimes if I don't have a lot to say about a movie, I don't want to make up a video about it. Like if all I have to say is like 45 seconds long, then that doesn't make a it doesn't make up for a very interesting uh, video and stuff. So I have seen seven movies in the past like month or two or three months, or, or the last time I did these reviews, uh, uh, and I have very quick opinions on them, uh, a lot of these ones, I just didn't have a lot of thoughts on it, uh, one of them I did, I just didn't have the time to make a whole video about it, so, let's get to it, here are seven movies I'm gonna be talking about, really quickly, here's my quick movie reviews, first one is Those Who Wish Me Dead, this movie is directed by Taylor Sheridan, the guy who did, um, Wind River. Wind River is a great movie. He also did. He's doing the show Yellowstone, which is great, and he wrote Hell or High Water, and he wrote the first Sicario. Big fan of Taylor Sheridan. Everything he does, I usually really enjoy, and this is no exception. Really, I actually really enjoyed this movie. Uh, it's not amazing. It's no, it's no Wind River. Wind River was incredible, but this was still very good. Angelina Jolie it was shockingly good. I haven't liked Angelina Jolie in a movie in God knows when, but uh, she was very good in the movie. Todd Perry was good, too. John Bernthal was good. Everyone was good in the movie. Uh, even the kid was good. And I liked the suspense. Uh, some of the grittiness was really good. It was well shot. And there was some really good moments of sheer tension. Um, I wish they developed um, Angelina Jolie's character a little more. And they did tackle two different things into one, which made it interesting and cool, but also made it made it sometimes a bit jumbled and a little uh, little convoluted at times. But I still had fun with it, and I still really enjoyed it. And I would give it a seven point five out of ten. I definitely recommend it. It's a fun movie. Quiet Place Two. Yes, a Quiet Place Two is a sequel that I was. This is the movie I was actually going to see, uh, but then the pandemic happened. So. Fuck you, Pandemic, but uh, Quiet Place 2 is good. It is a good sequel to A Quiet Place. I never wanted a sequel to A Quiet Place because I love A Quiet Place. I think A Quiet Place is a great film. Uh, this is still actually a very good sequel. Emily Blunt is fantastic. The actress that plays the daughter is good. Same with the son. He's good. Uh, Jean Renaissance is great. Uh, Killing Murphy is in it. He's great. Uh... Uh, the creatures are still really terrifying, and the way they use the sound mixing and the sound editing together is really creative. Um, they do a backstory. It's almost like a prequel and a sequel. The backstory is really well done, and how it first, like, comes about. That's, like, one of my favorite parts is when they, like, show the day it happened and stuff, and John Krasinski and his daughter and stuff. Really intense scene. Uh, John Krasinski proves, once again, he's a very talented director and knows how to direct very like intense thrillers like these visuals were good it was a very well shot movie and yeah it was it was a lot of fun it doesn't have it doesn't have the the eeriness the first one brought or the originality the first one brought because there was a lot of uh there's some rehash from the first film into this film and there's like similar things and similar like technologies they use in this one and the same as the first one like the first one was just so unique so it was such a interesting different idea of a movie and it's basically a lot of the same thing but just you know different scenarios and stuff and more of a story i guess but the first one just did it better and i just it had more an impact on me and i still liked this movie a lot i i'd give it an 8.1 out of 10 it's a really great film but still not as good as the first army of the dead dave batista and a zombie Killing, crushing, bloody, gore-fest action film. Convoluted. Makes no sense at half the time. Third act is like, what? What's happening? David Deese is great. The gore, violence, and practical effects is great. The action's badass. It's just non-stop carnage. Like, people are going to love this. I didn't love it. I thought it was, like... A fun hour and 40 minute time waster. Uh, had fun with it. Never will watch it again. Uh, there's so many things that make absolutely no sense with the story. And some of the, the just the plot elements. And just a lot of things happen in the third act. I'm like, what is that? What? <laughs> it's absolutely idiotic. And just, yeah. It's good. 
It's not great. It's a 6 out of 10. Army of the Dead. People will love it. Blue Miracle, a Netflix original film with uh, Dennis Quaid. Very dull, very boring, but very well shot and superbly well acted by Dan Dennis Quaid. Very good in this movie. Uh, there's some compelling moments, but there's moments filled with uh, dreariness and dullness. And it was a movie I kind of wanted it to end, even though I know there's a lot of things captivating and very well done in the film. It also gets a 6 out of 10 for me for being captivating and compelling, but it dogs a lot of points for being very dull. So, yeah. All right, uh, Spiral, the Saw movie. <laughs> this movie did not make me a Saw fan, so nice try. But uh, Chris Rock, he's great. Terrific, awesome character in the first act. <laughs> I thought they were going like a seven route. I thought it was like they were going very David Fincher with this shit. Then they just go right back to us being a Saw movie, which was annoying. Chris Rock's great. He's a great character. Sam Jackson is good. The traps are pretty awesome. But the movie doesn't know what it wants to be. Doesn't know if it wants to be a psychological thriller or a straight gore fest horror film. And it doesn't work as both. So it kind of fails as both. Even though there's a lot of good elements, but it doesn't really work as either one of them. It doesn't even know how to commit to either one of them, so it just falls apart for me. And just another bad Saw movie, I guess. So it's a it's a 5.2 out of 10. It's not good. It's not great. There's good moments in it, but it's not great. The woman, the, the woman in the window. This is the worst, one of the worst movies I've seen this whole year. I hated this fucking movie so much. It's ludicrous, the story. Amy Adams is one of her worst performances. It has a stupid ending. It just, it goes on and on and on. It thinks it has a message and it doesn't have a message. Everything about this movie was painful. I hated everything about it. It's not intense. It's not well written. It's not well executed. It's structuralized horribly. It just, the acting has good actors and all of them fail. It's just hated it it's a waste of your time it's a waste of anything it's a waste of your netflix subscription if you're watching on netflix or something like that it's absolute ass it's a one out of ten it's one of the worst films i saw this whole fucking year cruella <sighs> this movie don't know it's not great um it is a very well acted movie emma stone is great Emma Thompson is great. Emma Thompson is more of Cruella than Emma Stone, by the way. I, I don't understand the movie. <laughs> if it was a movie just about the fashion industry, make it about that. Just make it about that. What, like, wh wh Why does it have to connect to a Disney property? I, I know it's a Disney movie, but it doesn't have to connect to an animated Disney movie. I know you're just trying to make money, Disney. Like You're always fucking trying to make money and stuff, but... Why? This movie doesn't at all tie in to the movies. To the 101 Dalmatian movies. <laughs> Cruella de Vil, Emma Stone, doesn't even feel like Cruella de Vil. Even how the movie ends, it doesn't even tie in to that she even is Cruella. It, uh, the movie just tells you she is, but it doesn't seem like she is. Emma Thompson feels like Cruella de Vil. <laughs> It just doesn't make any sense. I'm just like, what? <laughs> like, and I'm not trying to knock the movie. The movie actually could have been pretty good if it didn't have that title character. If it was just about fashion and that's it. But it's not. It, 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 it fails that, that way. Then. That's like that's like saying uh, The Town is a Departed sequel. And it's not. <laughs> <laughs> then the movie just makes no sense. You're like, what? <laughs> it, like, it, it, the town was called The Town, a Departed sequel or something like that. And it just isn't. And a lot of people would get annoyed of that and think, like, that makes no sense. And that's what this movie is. It doesn't make any sense. <laughs> I, just, I don't know. And it's well acted. It's got great costumes, great production, great soundtrack. Uh... It goes on for two long. It's like two hours, 20 minutes. It goes on. I'm like, ugh. It drags. Uh, like, 
even if it didn't have that title character, it would have been like maybe like a seven out of ten, maybe six and a half. It, it would have been just decent. It was pretty good. But because it has that title character, and it doesn't tie in, and it doesn't even make sense, and it's just a cash grab by Disney, because they just want to make profit off of everything that they've created already. It's just annoying. It, it's really annoying. And it's getting more and more annoying as these movies keep coming out and stuff. So I couldn't stand Mulan, but people loved it. Can't stand this. And I'm, I think people love it. That's fine. For me, it's a 5.4 out of 10. So yeah. Those are my quick movie reviews. If you disagree with me, I apologize. It's my opinion. Uh, so in the comments below, please tell me what are your thoughts and opinions on all these movies. And give me your ratings and your opinions. And tell me I'm wrong. You guys love to do that. So comment below and let me know. And as always, if you like this video, please subscribe to this channel and join the dark side.